Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the channel, the Shotgun Shogun, and I hope you had a great weekend. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Guilty Gear collab. I'm going to be going over what it was like last year, what you should be focusing on, and I'm also going to have a little bit of a mini rant near the end, so if you want to, just skip to that or just stick around. So last year around this time, actually last year almost exactly at this time, we had the Guilty Gear collab, right? And this is one of the more notoriously grindy events. Now, they did say that they're going to make it a lot easier this time around so we'll see we are it was four weeks last time you had the soul you had the soul route the biken route the dizzy route and then you had the final story now this time is around is going to be three weeks so what i'm kind of assuming here is that you're going to have all of these routes like right out the gate and then you're probably going to have two weeks for the new the new one the elfelt's uh event thing so either that or it's going to be the last week so it'll be the first week the first two will be the first two weeks then the second will be the second two or the second week will be the last two and then you'll have elf else on the last part now we are going to assume that you're going to have elf Elf for at least at least two weeks either that or they're just going to drop all the banners at, on the first day they're all going to run for three weeks and then you just do whatever it is you need to do to get these done but so it is a typical side story, right? So you have your your typical farming on everything. You're going to have four different areas. Different artifacts are going to increase different things. So if you already have Torn Sleeve and you already have a Junkyard Dog, that's going to make this already infinitely easier on you. So that's going to be really good on the first two. So you're going to have Junkyard Dog, Torn Sleeve are going to help. And then, you know, as you go, as you go, you're going to get other things here. So typically you're going to have, you're, going to, you're already going to have your side story uh you're gonna have your shop and everything like that but you're also going to have a tournament let's see if it shows it down here it doesn't show it down here but you're gonna have a tournament basically that's just kind of like an extra side shop thing that you use do to get uh additional additional things but you are gonna to want to take a look here you are gonna to have to you're gonna to have to get 2500 different uh different materials the currencies to get yourself a soul bad guy and you're gonna have multiple ways you're gonna get some from the store you're gonna get one from the tournament you're gonna get some from the shops in order to get all of the ones that you need in order to max him out now he is a free unit and he is an absolute powerhouse so make sure that you prioritize getting him because he's gonna help you out a lot especially if you're struggling in any tort any any of the raids anything like that he's also potentially really good in pvp depending on how you build him he's a very big pve powerhouse house Gollum he's the king of Gollum easily easily so make sure that that's one of your high priorities now your secondary priority in my opinion is going to be farming the portrait of saviors let me get my little window here up out of the way all right so portrait of saviors is going to be the next priority that you're going to want to get like probably depending on how much you want to farm you're going to need to get like two to three of these maxed out max copies two to three of them what is this this is the free upgraded exorcist tonfa at max level this is going to give you 20 percent extra damage when the enemy's health is above 50 percent personally i have two maxed ones i wish that i would have farmed two more now Again, this is uh they're gonna probably change the way things are because last year we had this as a side like event type deal. You went in and you fought and you could get these. Now it's chances are that it's gonna be like the Halloween event with Cirilla, right? So they're gonna just put this on the map. You're gonna have a node that you're just gonna be able to kill, farm, and then it's gonna drop these. It's basically gonna be the same thing as the previous year. It's just going to be in the side story itself. So make sure that you are burning leaves, you're burning sky stones, whatever you need to in order to get anywhere from Personally, I would say three copies. Three copies is very solid. If you want to go above and beyond, you're, you know, a, a high achiever, get four to five. This way you can have them on your DPS. You're not moving them around. You're not trying to, you know, figure out, oh man, I got to move this. Is my portrait of saviors on this character or is it on this character? You already know because you got five of them. It's like getting multiple daydream jokers, right? So that's going to be your secondary priority. Both of these are going to be just the top 
top priorities. Get yourself all of your soul bad guys. Don't limit break it or don't break him to six stars until you have all copies of him. That way you're not using any of your dogs. And then he's triple S and you're good to go. Get yourself anywhere from two to five copies of this, because if you only get one, you're going to, you're going to just hate yourself. You're going to be like, oh, I wish I would have gotten more. And we don't know if this is ever going to come back again. So that's really a big thing. Like if you have to, if you have to dolphin for some energy, honestly, in my opinion, it is absolutely worth it. Um, because these are some, these are some pretty big game changers right here. Not only that, like I said, portrait free soul free. What's better than free. So that's one of the big things. Now, like I said before, you do have to farm quite a bit in this. Like if you see here, like just soul bad guy by himself is 2,500 currency. Not only that, you're paying 1,200 currency for the junkyard dog, which if you like Wyvern 13, trainer guard with a junkyard dog is it, you almost required, right? Because it it gives you a lot more extra chances for debuffs. Not only that, but Junkyard Dog's really good. You can run it with characters like Purges for AOE burns. There's a bunch of other things that you can use Junkyard Dog for in terms of like PVE, PVP st settings. A lot of people don't because there's other things like Sigurd Scythe, things like that, but that's a whole other topic. Now, what should you be looking for in terms of pulling units now first off you are going to have dizzy by ken and elfelt we don't know what elfelt's abilities are and honestly i would say wait until we see what it is before you really really make your decisions um, and but i'm going to go over both of these characters that you're going to be able to pull the other characters the artifacts like what you should make kind of your priority if you don't have any of them right so First off, I have videos and I'll link these down below to my really big deep dives on a lot of these characters. So that way you can see, you know, a little bit of what they do. But first off, we're going to talk about Dizzy and why you probably should prior if you are a new player, why you should probably prioritize Dizzy. And I've already seen a lot of people they'll ask for advice they'll be like, "Hey, should I pull Dizzy? Is she still godlike like she used to be?" Because when Dizzy hit the scene, she like just was the mo one of the most cancerous units in the world. And honestly, I think that if you're going to be playing RTA, right, she's going to still be one of the most cancerous units because she basically makes you have to change the entire way that you play the game, right? So, the other thing too, and I go into this a bit more in my uh, my deep dive on the character is that you can build her multiple ways, right? So you never know what it is that they're going to be bringing. Are they going to be bringing a 277 speed, you know, violin dizzy or counter crown dizzy? Is she super thick and effect resist? Honestly, like, you know, that's one of the big things here. And honestly, in my opinion, if you had to pick between her and Biken, I would pick dizzy only because there are other people that can do kind of what by Ken does. She's a grass DPS. Whereas the things that Dizzy does are just an exponentially different than just about every unit in the game. Everything that she has is AOE. So if you use her artifact, which we'll talk about here in a hot second, uh, it does benefit her quite a bit. I might actually just roll for some more of her artifacts. I kind of wish that, you know, I'd, I didn't have to because I have her triple S. So we'll see. We'll see. I might hold off on that. I don't know yet, but she, her S three misses every time. So you can build it to do damage actually, because you're going to have static damage. You can build her high effectiveness. You can build her with violin. You can build her with crown and everything is AOE. So as long as you have some sort of strip on your team, which they have put in quite a bit of strip, you got Athletica, you got regular Lytica, you got Roman, Basar, Alencia, you got all kinds of people that can strip buffs now. So debuff immunity is not really the biggest thing. Uh, people be like, oh, hey, immunity set. But the thing is, is if you're, if you're talking arena, yes, Dizzy fell off. If you're talking RTA, Absolutely not, because now that you are controlling her against the uh, against the enemy offense, just wait till next turn. Just wait, wait a turn and then guess what? Your debuff immunity set is gone. Or like I said, run a Basar or an Alencia or something along those lines. You can speed tune, have multiple debuffers. Well, what about Champ Zerato? Just ban him. E pretty easy. Pretty easy. If there's a threat on the other team, you can just 
span it. So one of the other things too is if you put D, uh, Dizzy into your RTA draft, they either have to have an answer, they have to have two answers to her, or ban her. And what you can do is you could run Dizzy in your draft and then have units that outside of her would counter the like the counters basically so if they champ if they pick champ zerato well you've got dizzy but you've also got four other units that don't really bring debuffs and can one sh you know destroy champ zerato because realistically if you don't have debuffs he he's still good he just loses a little bit of his a little bit of his oomph you know, by returning the debuffs on the counter attack. So I think that what Dizzy is going to be really big on just changing the way that people play and how they need to bring things. Because let's be real, if you're trying to speed cleave me, um, I could just run, I can run a big thick uh, counter attack Dizzy. So you judge Kisei into it. There's the chance that I'm going to, I'm going to counter, you know. There's, uh, you could run super fast, you know, run her with some CR pushers, things along those lines. Now, there are plenty of ways to counter her in just terms of DPS. You can bring a Yafine, things like that. So she's not invincible. I just think that she will change up the way that a lot of the game is played in terms of RTA. Now, if you're talking Biken, as you can see up above, I use Biken pretty much predominantly as my B13 killer. Uh, one shot, one shots. Uh, pretty easy actually, as long as I get the defense break off anyways. Um, now in Guild Wars, she's an absolute monster. If you bring her with an aux slots, uh, against anything that is actually pretty much anything, she can kill it. Uh, if you build her for just, you can, and you, the thing too, is you can leave her as your B13 killer and bring her to Guild Wars. And if you have a speedy aux slots, you're going to just delete two units. That's one of the big things with bike. And then that gives you a very adv advantageous position for the last unit. Now, the one big thing with her is she does require a lot of Molagoras and a lot of investment into her in order to do the things that she does. But once you do that she does the things that she does very, very well. You don't really have to put too many Molgoras into her S1, but her S2 and her S3 are almost a requirement just for the extra damage and, and those things in order to do that. Now, the best thing about her S3 too is after you kill the second unit, you will CR push everybody forward, right? So then you can set things up like I would do a... I would do a uh bike and spez oxlots team if i went up against like let's say a an arbiter vildred right so bike and kills the other two pushes spez forward he had just enough to kill the arbiter vildred so boom easy team easy life so she is really good if you are trying to pick between one of the two. Honestly, I would still say go Dizzy, even though by Ken, I absolutely love her. You know, probably one of my favorite units to use. But if you have to make the choice, I would say go with Dizzy out of those two. Now, uh, as I said before, you know, obviously Soul Bad Guy is free, so you're going to want to get him, Portrait of Saviors. Dizzy's artifact is pretty good, but honestly, I would say that this isn't a priority to roll for. If you've already gotten one Dizzy, maybe pick one of these up and then use your bottles from the shop in order to break it down the road. But again, I don't know. This is personally not one of my more favorite ones to use because there's things like Abyssal Crown, there's Violin, there's uh, Etika Scepter, there's a bunch of other things that you can use that are just seemingly better than this now i know at max level plus 30 you're going to get an extra 20 percent cr uh, cr push after every aoe attack now this it doesn't doesn't matter if it's on counter attack or dual attack or extra attack so you're not going to get that you're not going to just be like psh, pushing yourself forward but the thing is is if you do have a really super speedy dizzy and you are running um this you are going to be just lapping things pretty hard because everything you do is aoe so every single move that you do is going to push you further forward um so this could help if you're running like very very fast in order to cycle things lap people uh keep them debuffed endlessly 
Uh, but again, it's one of those things where I do think that if you if you have the option to use other things like crown or um, scepter or violin, it's probably much better overall in terms of your uh, in terms of your damage and your viability. Now, torn sleeve. Honestly, like you could get one of these and it's going to help your Wyvern 13 a little bit, not a ton. Um, I was using this at one point. I have a plus 31. I was using it on my Alexa. Honestly, I just switched to Daydream Joker and it made a lot faster. So you can use this in order to help with the bleeds, things like that, and go from there. But honestly, I I don't think it's the most required, uh, the most required thing in the game if you want to get one for collection purposes go for it um, but i wouldn't necessarily make it a priority now it is nice um, if you are if if we ever get a bleed meta back which i mean honestly i don't mind bleed i think that it'd be interesting to try to make that work but we'll see in the future uh, at the moment bleeds are not very amazing but with that let me get to a little bit of my of my rant here now i was looking at this i was getting ready to make this video and i'm like you know let me look at the patch notes let me see make sure everything's going like what time everything is going and things like that and i remembered that there's going to be a buff event, right? So during one of the more notoriously grindy events, we're going to need copious amounts of currency in order to buy the character and the artifact and all of the other things. They decide to put in a buff event. Now, this week, there was absolutely nothing really going on. There was the Luluka side story, but who cares about that? This is kind of a dead week of people literally just farming Hunt 13s in order to reforge their gear for arena and RTA and things like that. So they decided in their infinite wisdom here, you know what, during one of the most notoriously grindy events, let's just do a buff event because, you know, while the free on equip and the artifact on equip is, is great, fine, fantastic. You have 50% hunt crafting material drop rate increase and 30% gold increase literally during literally during the side story now it's probably going to be a lot easier because you know they said they're going to make it a lot easier in order to get that so maybe they're going to ramp up the amount of currency that you get maybe they're going to drop down how much currency soul and the artifact get i don't know but for a lot of new people who don't have those things because i don't need to buy soul i don't really need to I, i'll probably max out another junkyard dog but that's just so i can have two junkyard dogs um and obviously I'm going to be farming portraits. So what do I pick? Do I pick 50% hunt crafting material drop rate? Because I need it. Hopefully it uh, applies to hearts and conversion stones. Fingers crossed. Or do I farm the event? Now, the next time around, eh, spirit altars aren't really the biggest thing. But personally, I need to farm um, water, uh, ice uh, runes. So do you pick... I need to farm these runes or do you pick the side story? Uh, and then there's like literally the advent AP point increase, which I mean, you don't get on the side story. So what are you even going to, what are you even doing? You know, you don't, you're not going to really run that. So that kind of is a complete negation of that buff. Like who's, who's running that when you can just be running the side story or you're finishing up the side story or while well, you're running hunts, uh, realistically, at least I would be. But, you know, it's they put this literally in the dead center of the of the collab. And I don't understand the the thinking on this one. It doesn't really make much sense to me. They could have put it this week as like a sell because like, it's the Guilty Gear collaboration celebration buff event. Right. So they could have put the the hunt buffs, the art, the gold increase, the spirit alters over the course of this week, the previous week in order to celebrate coming into the collab, a lot of people would use their leaves, their energy, stuff like that. And then if they're trying to make money off of refills and things along those lines, then when the Guilty Gear collab drops, a lot of people will just go through and buy all of that stuff, right? So, I mean, it, it does happen at the beginning of the month. So, I mean, I personally will be buying every one of the leaf packs in order to get through everything and 
just because I, I buy them every month. But I think that this was a, a weird choice right here. Like, um, yeah, they could have, that would have given us a lot of stuff to do this week. Uh, because it was kind of a bit of a dead week. You know, you're just going to be farming. I would have farmed a lot of stuff. I would have farmed the AP points because I need epic catalysts from everything. So I would have easily done that. But if I'm going to have to prioritize um, AP, AP increase versus, you know, Guilty Gear collab or hunts or something along those lines all at the same time, well, I'm going to go with the other things over the adventure points. Uh, so that's almost a three, three, four dead days for me that I really don't care too much about. The 30% XP increases is okay. Um, but at the same time, that's, I'm still going to be farming the side story. Now, if it was 50% adventure points and side story currency, that would be, well, that would be amazing because then, well, then everybody would just kind of wait until the very last like four days in order to farm everything like a crazy madman because you would be able to farm it at 50% faster uh, rates. But the thing is here is I think that this was a big miss. And I think that, you know, it kind of is negating the whole buff event in general because you have to prioritize now. So it was really weird. I kind of wish that they would have done that. But anyways, that was a little bit of a rant. That was a lot of bit about the Guilty Gear collab. Like I said, it is one of the more grindy events. We'll see how they fixed it to make it easier for three weeks. Um, the other thing, too, is they're going to announce potentially a ML unit because we're going to need one here soon. So we don't know what new unit they're going to come out with. And that's a lot of units in in one small stretch of time. But anyways, guys, if you did like this, as always, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you haven't yet, daily Epic 7 content, probably like three or four Epic content, like contents per day. Um, follow me over Twitch. Uh, help, me help me by sharing this out. I appreciate it. Uh, and as always, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy, homies. Peace.